Hugging Face have just announced something that I think is probably going to be a very major thing in the future of large language models and NLP. And that is their spin on agents for large language models and, and transformers in general. Now, there's quite a few reasons as to why I think Hugging Face are in a very good position to offer possibly one of the best agents and tool frameworks out there. And I'm gonna discuss those. First, for those of you that haven't heard of these things before, or just kind of not sure what they are, let me quickly explain what an agent and what a tool is. So we, you know what large language models are? They are big transformer models that can basically answer questions in natural language for us based on some natural language input. A agent kind of takes this and takes it a little bit further and expands these LLMs out to basically allow them to have multiple steps of reasoning and thought so they can think to themselves and this is ideal for when we want to integrate what are called tools so what we can do is we can tell an llm hey we want you to answer a question if you can't answer it by yourself you can actually refer to some other tools that we have given to you and you might say something like, if you don't know about a particular topic, you can perform a Google search in order to find out about that particular topic. And you would also explain you know, how it can do that. And because the LLM has this multi-step thought process, it can say, okay, I've got this question, I need to use the Google search tool. And then it will say, how do I use that Google search tool? It's gonna to pro provide some input to Google search. We would then go do a Google search for it, return some answers and pass that back into the LLM. And now all of a sudden it can answer a question. And you can do this for a ton of tools, the SQL databases, knowledge base, so vector databases and so on. Python interpreters, you can do basically uh, anything you can program, you can create a tool out of it. Now, obviously this is a very powerful thing to be able to do. Now at the moment, by far the biggest library for using agents is Langchain. There's also Haystack who have introduced agents recently. And there's also actually ChatGPT plugins, which are a form of agents as well, or at least it's a form of tools added to the agents, which is actually ChatGPT itself. Now, Hugging Face have also kind of jumped on the bandwagon, and I think their implementation is actually uh, very interesting and particularly powerful for a lot of different reasons. A big component of that is what Hugging Face actually is. So Hugging Face is essentially almost like a huge community and hub of all of these different transformer models, diffusion models for generating images, data sets, and just a ton of, of anything you can think of in, in machine learning, Hugging Face actually cover a lot of it. And their version of agents and tools are very interesting. And you know, I haven't been all the way through it yet. This is kind of my, my first look, but the agent itself is very simple to use. It also can be used as a conversational agent, so as a chatbot where you have multi steps in the process. And it also gives us access to all of these models on Hugging Face, which I think is one of the coolest things about it. But, and there's other things as well, but actually let me jump into it and show you those rather than just talking through them. We'll just have a quick look at their example here. So they have basically, they don't really show you anything. I'm gonna go through the code in a moment. You run agent.run caption the following image, right? And then they pass in this image, right? Through image here. And then the output is a beaver swimming in the water. Then they also have this. So agent run, read the following text out loud. And it will use a text speech model to actually do that. You can also do this. So we have like some OCR reading this document or this image of a document. And then we say in this following document, Ask, we, we ask a question and the output is this ballroom foyer, which is down here at the bottom, bottom right. Now, the point here is that these agents are using like a ton of different models from the Transformers library. And I think this takes pretty clear inspiration from this paper called Hugging GPT, which essentially use chat GPT with a, a ton of hugging face models to do a load of cool things. So it used the same sort of approach where you have an agent, which was the chat GPT model, 
And if we come down to the first image here, this basically shows us how it works. We have a large language model, ChatGPT in this case, or GPT 3.5 Turbo, I assume. And this is like your controller. And then we have all of these, what we would call specialist models that can do particular things that ChatGPT is not able to do, like understand what is within an image or caption an image. And ChatGPT or your, your large language model is able to basically figure out, okay, given a question, which models do we need to use? What input do I need to pass to them? And then uses the output from those models to inform the next step of trying to, you know, figure out what it needs to do and then provide a very cool answer that a normal large language model would not be able to do by itself. Now, let's take a look at a code example of how we can use this. Now, initially, I'm just actually using one of the examples from Hugging Face and then we'll just go through it's a few cells and then we'll do something a little more interesting. So first thing we need to do here is install a few things. So Transformers, which is a library that contains the agents. Because we're going to be using image generation and models here, so the diffusion models, we need to use Hugging Face diffusers. And we're also going to use Accelerate, which I believe allows us to run things faster. Now, in reality, and I'm not sure if this is the case, I think we should hopefully be running on a GPU here. Okay, so here I've gone into my runtime settings and just changed my hardware accelerator to GPU. And then what we do is we're just going to use OpenAI here. Obviously, you know, for your large language model, Hugging Face makes it very easy to use other open source options. So you can you can do that. I'm just using this because I know it's going to work. It's quick. So here we are. And I'm going to use TextDaVinci 003. Basically, what I found, generally speaking, is that TextDaVinci 003 is usually better at following instructions for tools within agents than GPT 3.5 Turbo. And that's also the model that they use, that Hugging Face is using in their examples. So I'm not 100% sure if they support GPT 3.5 Turbo yet. I'll need to try at some point. So yeah, all we do, Transformers, Tools, Import, Open AI Agent. And there are other agents as well. I think there's the Hugging Face agent is like HF agent, maybe. Uh, but obviously we're just going to use OpenAI one here. You will need to add in your OpenAI API key, which you can get from platform, platform.openai.com. Okay, so we're going to run this. This is going to initialize our agent. And actually that's all we need to do. <laughs> and now it works, which is very easy and, and quick to sell. So I think all we're doing here is Okay, so we're downloading the tool configuration. And this is a very interesting component of Hugging Face's tools implementation, uh, which is that we can download community contribute tools and obviously Hugging Face's own tools. So in the next, probably very soon, next few weeks, we're probably going to see some pretty insane tools appear from the community, which will be fascinating to see. That's one of the big components as to why I think this is going to be pretty major. Okay, and another reason I think this is gonna be pretty major is that we can do multimodal agents super easily. So I haven't done anything here, right? I just initialized my agent and I said, okay, I want to generate an image of a boat in the water, right? And because Hugging Face has, they have a big diffusers library which contains loads of text to image diffusion models and they obviously have all the transform models as well. They've kind of integrated at least a few of those into the default agent. So if I just say generate an image of a boat in the water, what it's doing here is this isn't how long it takes to process. This is actually downloading the model, okay? So the, the image generation model. This will only happen once, okay? And I'll, I'll prove that by running it again in a moment. So that's gonna download. It is, okay, here we go. So we've got an estimation from the agent. I'm gonna use the following tool, image generator to generate an image according to the prompt. Then it generates some code here. And here we go. Here's, here is our image of a boat in the water. Okay, so yeah, th th that was super easy <laughs> to do. And let me just run that again. Okay, and you'll see that it doesn't take quite as long this time. 
Okay, so it's just generating the image. And there we go, right? That, that was eight seconds, which, you know, considering it also three seconds to generate the image, that's pretty good for an agent. So that is really cool. And okay, what we can also do is, okay, I have a boat image here. And we can come down and do agent run again. And I can pass in this variable, okay? So we use this uh, back tick here and we can pass in a variable which we then enter its own actual variable here right so we could we could also just do like image okay and then that just means that we need to replace image here okay so let's run that i'm just going to ask you to write a caption for this image again it's going to need to download the captioning uh, model as you can see here okay and then we get a boat floating in the water with clouds in the background all right, let's run it again so we can see how long that actually takes. Okay, so four seconds. Again, very quick. Okay, and then, so here I was just looking, okay, what does that prompt template look like when we're doing that run method? You can kind of see a little bit of logic that is going on in here. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you to form tasks. It includes all the tools here, and then it gives a few examples, and then ask it to figure out what it needs to do next, right? This is just, yeah, we don't, we don't need that. It just contains all the code for the agent, which is another nice thing that I like about the Hugging Face implementation is that the code is pretty readable. Um, so if something isn't quite working the way you'd expect it to work, you can go into code and kind of figure out why almost straight away, which is not as easy to do with other uh, libraries at the moment. So that that's very nice. And yeah, I mean, it's super cool. Now let's have a look at a conversational agent. So basically a chatbot, right? So I'm gonna say, hey, how are you? Okay, we just get this, right? Hi there, I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Cool. I'm gonna ask it to create an image of a giraffe riding a skateboard. And I, I just made this up very quickly before running this. And I mean, the results are not perfect, but they're, 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 they're funny, right? So we're not running any special diffusion models here. So we'll get like this weird two-headed giraffe but you know let's stick with that and like i said the results are entertaining and <laughs> they're not particularly impressive from a image generation point of view but it's just interesting to to see so here we're using a image generator model and then you come down here and it's not going to use a image generator model it's going to use an image transform model to modify the existing image and this is something that is really cool as well. So, okay, first it needs to download that, that model. So let me explain what is so cool here, right? So look, you can see that it's generating some code, right? And this code is actually referring to the image, okay? And the image is generated by this code beforehand. So the Python interpreter that all of this is using is maintained between chat interactions it's going to write some code and then you can say oh actually can you do something else and it's it can still interact with that code it can, it can still see that code and it's going to write some more code based on what's already done which is not something that i have seen done by default in other libraries that use agents and tools so i mean that's just a really cool thing that i i like and it's just insane how easy it is to get that working so cool yeah, so now we get this, right? So it's, it's an elephant. So this image transform model, I haven't used an image transform model before. I didn't actually know they were a thing, but I think what it does is identifies where in the image the draft is, which it's done, and then just tries to modify that part of the image. So we get this kind of weird, I mean, yeah, I can see what it's trying to do, but it's interesting, right? So, Okay, cool. And then this this didn't work for me before. I want to try it again. So could you give the elephant shiny laser eyes? Last time I tried this, it made the elephant like made of gold. Uh, let's see what it does this time. Maybe it just read, could you make the elephant shiny? I'm not sure. Okay, so it, it went through that again. So now we have like a, I don't know what it is. It's like a gold giraffe, I think. Um, and then, okay, we can caption the image. So I'm very curious as to what it says about this image. Okay, and this caption is a, a GIF, gif -e, standing on a skateboard. Before, I'm pretty sure it gave me a very similar, very similar output. So I wonder if 
is it? Ah, uh, okay, so it's a modified image, right? So can you caption the modified image? Or what I'm going to say is, I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to say, sorry, I meant the modified image. Okay, okay, A, G, GAF. Okay, so the code is right. So the caption is image captioner, modified image. And then this is weird. I'm not sure why, like maybe there's some weird stuff going on with the tokenizer here. But yeah, here we get a, a GI GIF on a skateboard. Okay, fair enough. And then I wanted to test this a little more. Can you search the internet for some more of these types of images? So a search tool is a pretty typical tool that is included within agents. And I just wanted to see if they include that by default. So let's try and we'll, we'll see. Okay, so unfortunately, no, they don't seem to. So it, it refers to a text downloader tool. Okay, and that is apparently a thing. So it downloads the, the text downloader model or tool. I'm not sure what it is exactly. And yeah, it just downloads some text. So doesn't work for everything yet, but that I think is, is already pretty cool. The fact that we're just referring to all these models that we have this like Python interpreter just built in and just like so easy to use, I think is, is really interesting. And yeah, I, I, for sure, we're, we're definitely gonna do a lot more on transformer agents in the future. Uh, but for now, yeah, I just want to introduce the the library to you or the, the new features to you and also just explore them myself. Again, like I said, there's a massive community aspect to this. So that is probably one of the biggest things that I think Hugging Face Agents has going for it. The fact that they will have, and I haven't, I haven't seen if there are, if we can actually find them on the Hugging Face website. But let me show you what it looks like with just models. So we can come over here, we have models, right? And there's just tons of models on Hugging Face, right? Now imagine that they're planning to do or are doing the same thing with tools. And it's not here yet, I don't, I don't see any tools, but clearly the, the code or the interface is already there because we were downloading tools here. I, I believe we were downloading tools here. So that is super interesting and yeah, I'm sure people are going to build some insane tools very quickly. So yeah, that will be pretty huge in my opinion. Now, I haven't seen how customizable these agents are yet. That's something we'll be exploring very soon. But I would imagine, you know, Hugging Face do make things pretty simple. So I, my expectation is that it will be pretty easy to, to work through and, and figure all of that out. So yeah, overall, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited to see what they what they do with this i think this will be a really cool feature but for now i'm going to leave it there so i hope this has been interesting and, and useful thank you very much for watching and i will see you again in the next one bye